I'd like to move on to the presentation from CNSC staff at this time as outlined in CMD 15H2 and 15H2.8. I understand Mr. Jamal will make the presentation. Please, please go ahead. Mr. Jamal, for the record, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just wanted to, uh, for the public, uh, reintroduce Mr. Barkley Howden. Uh, who is the Director General for uh, the Directorate of Power Regulations, Reactors Regulations. And I uh, would like to thank on record one more time Dr. Jankowski, who will be leaving us for a uh, much challenge assignment on the global safety uh, level, where he will be addressing the enhancement of nuclear safety globally. So I'll pass on the floor to Mr. Uh, Howden. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. President and members of the Commission. Uh, my name is Barclay Howden, and I'm the Director General of the Directorate of Power Reactor Regulation at the CNSC. With me today is Mr. Ken Lafreniere, Director of the Bruce Regulatory Program Division. Also, regulatory and technical staff from the CNSC are present and available to answer any questions the Commission may have. This presentation provides information in relation to the renewal of the Bruce A and Bruce B Power Reactor Operating Licenses. As you can see from the outline, this presentation focuses on CNSC staff regulatory oversight and assessments of Bruce Power's performance. Regulatory focus areas will also be discussed. <coughs> Bruce Power is located in the municipality of Concarden in the county of Bruce, Ontario. The Bruce A and B stations are part of the Bruce Nuclear Power Development site on the shores of Lake Huron. Ontario Power Generation owns the Bruce A and B stations, and Bruce Power has been operating these stations under a lease agreement with Ontario Power Generation since 2001. The Bruce A station consists of four 750 megawatt CANDU reactors, which came into service between 1977 and 1979. The Bruce B station consists of four 817 megawatt CANDU reactors, which came into service between 1984 and 1987. In 2012, Bruce Power returned Units 1 and 2 of the Bruce A station to service after the refurbishment. All eight units are currently operational. The current Bruce A and B operating licenses expire on May 31, 2015. The Bruce Power has requested a five-year license to continue to operate Bruce A and B. If Bruce Power decides to refurbish any unit, Bruce Power must return to the Commission for approval to start such a project. Licensing considerations were based on CNSC staff review of the two license applications and the information submitted to support the applications. In addition, CNSC staff assessed Bruce Power's past performance with its compliance with the regulatory requirements of the 14 safety and control areas and other matters of regulatory interest. I'll now pass the presentation over to Mr. Lafreniere, who will discuss CNSC's regulatory oversight, Bruce Power's past performance, and focus areas. Thank you, Mr. Howden. Uh, Mr. President, members of the Commission, my name is Ken Lafreniere, and I am the Bruce uh, Regulatory Program Director. The Commission granted uh, Bruce Power its first license to operate to the Bruce A and B stations in 2001. This hearing represents the fifth license renewal request to the Commission since that time. After the Commission grants a license, the role of CNC staff is to provide regulatory oversight in order to ensure that Bruce Power is operating the nuclear power plant in a safe manner, in compliance with the requirements of the Nuclear Safety Control Act and its regulations, as well as the Commission approved license conditions. To confirm this, Bruce Power, like all other nuclear power plant operators. This is achieved by CNSC staff performing ongoing compliance activities such as plant walkdowns, assessments of operating performance, event reviews, system inspections, reviews of Bruce Powers programs and procedures, reviews of information routinely submitted in support of the licensed activities. Performance is continuously assessed and the results and hundreds of positive and negative findings annually. CNSC staff ensure that Bruce Power staff are qualified to perform their work, that the plant equipment is maintained and updated if necessary to respond to lessons learned from operating experience. 
CNC staff track all identified non-compliances to resolution. Risk significant issues are brought in front of the Commission as per the event initial report process. As well, staff report annually to the Commission on Bruce Power's performance in the CNC staff integrated safety assessment of Canadian nuclear power plants report. Historically, Bruce Power has been a safe, well-performing site. However, continuous improvement and enhancement of safety. Bruce pa However, for continuous enhancement of safety, Bruce Power is also implementing many improvements to the satisfaction of CNC staff, and these improvements will be discussed further in this presentation. Bruce Power is responsible for ensuring safe operation of the station, where CNC staff independently verify Bruce Power's performance. As shown in this table, compliance verification activities by CNC staff inspectors during the current licensing period comprise of numerous walk-downs, inspections and document reviews. These activities rep represent over 12,000 person days of effort by CNC site staff. CNC site inspectors carry out daily walk-downs, field inspections with specialist staff from Ottawa following the CNC risk-informed baseline compliance program. CNC staff also increase these activities for special projects. The increase in the number of inspections in 2011 and 12 was due to the refurbishment activities of Units 1 and 2 at Bruce A. And as the Commission is aware, these units were returned to service late in 2012. CNC staff conclude that for the vast majority of these inspections, there are no significant findings and Bruce Power continues to be in compliance with all regulatory requirements. As required in the course of compliance activities, CNC staff raise action items on Bruce Power to track resolution of issues. Bruce Power has responded to the satisfaction of CNC staff for all issues raised. CNC staff also conduct routine surveillance and monitoring activities above and beyond the inspections and walkdowns that are performed to provide further verification that the plant is operating in accordance with regulatory requirements. CNC site staff attend approximately 500 operational meetings a year, including Bruce Power's daily management and leadership meetings, which are outage meetings that discuss plant status, quarterly update meetings, corrective action review board meetings, management review meetings, which are the review of the station condition records, and plant health meetings. According to license requirement, Bruce Power has developed a robust management system which includes a problem identification and corrective action program. An input to the corrective action program is the station condition record, which documents issues and problems so that appropriate corrective action can be taken. CNC staff have access to these records and routinely review over 10,000 station condition <laughs> records per year to ensure that Bruce Power is meeting this fundamental nuclear safety objective. Bruce Power's management system also requires that all critical activities are logged in the station control room logs. This helps ensure that the plant status is known by operators at all time for the purposes of providing insight as to how the stations are operating and whether there are any major issues that require CNC staff follow-up. Staff perform daily reviews of station logs at both stations. CNC staff conclude that Bruce Power's operating personnel are well aware of the status of the plant and that the plant is operating safely. Action items are part of our normal CNSC staff ongoing compliance process that CNSC staff use to track issues. During the current licensing period, CNSC staff have closed 137 action items. There are currently 51 open action items for Bruce A and B, none of which are safety significant nor present an impediment to relicensing. CNSC staff also perform document reviews and send formal correspondence to Bruce Power on the results of these reviews. In addition, informal discussions and meetings are held on a daily basis between CNC staff and Bruce Power. CNC staff deliver a consistent regulatory oversight by following a graduated enforcement policy. This enforcement process includes recommendation, action items and directives, licensing actions by the Commission such as hold points in the license, administrative monetary penalties, orders under the Nuclear Safety Control Act. In all the above exchanges, Bruce Power has been responsive to CNC staff and no escalation of enforcement 
was required during this licensing period. This slide provides a summary of plant ratings for the Bruce A and B over the current five-year licensing period for the 14 safety and control areas. Overall, the safety and control area ratings have been satisfactory to fully satisfactory, apart from the below expectation for the rating of radiation protection performance at Bruce A during the Unit 1 refurbishment in 2010. This was due to an event involving the alpha radioisotope exposure to workers. Although this event resulted in unplanned exposure to workers and was subject to Bruce Powering appearing in front of the Commission for multiple meetings, over 500 workers were monitored and the maximum dose assigned to an individual from the event was 6.9 millisieverts, which is well below the regulatory dose limit. Since that time, the radiation protection program enhancements have been implemented at Bruce Power, as well as at all other Canadian nuclear power plants. CNC staff are confident that these enhancements will prevent an event of this nature in the future. Bruce Power's performance in the radiation protection program was since been rated satisfactory for the rest of the licensing period. CNEC staff do not expect the satisf satisfactory integrated plant rating to change for 2014. Performance in all safety control areas has remained satisfactory during the current licensing period. No worker or member of the public received the dose in excess of regulatory dose limits, and all radiological releases were well below regulatory limits. The environment was adequately protected. Bruce Powers programs were implemented and ma maintained effectively in accordance with license requirements. Operating performance has been satisfactory throughout the current licensing period. Bruce Power has established and implemented safety enhancements during the current licensing period. For example, CNC staff are satisfied with the significant progress made by Bruce Power in implementing the Fukushima action items. In summary, Bruce Power has made adequate provi provisions for the protection of the environment, workers, and public. The Bruce A and B generating stations have a very good safety record. There are currently no safety concerns and no impediments to renew the operating license for the Bruce A and B stations. CNC staff, however, have regulatory focus areas which stem from the Commission direction, from operating experience, or from new research findings. The four main focus areas for this license renewal are emergency management, aging, probabilistic safety assessment, and the environment which includes such topics as Fukushima items and pressure boundary integrity. These will be described in more detail in the following slides. Bruce Power is working in these areas for continuous safety improvement, which is an integral part of the CNSC regulatory framework. Bruce Power's Nuclear Emergency Management Program at Bruce Bay A and B was rated satisfactory through the current licensing period. New emergency mitigating equipment has been installed and facilities upgraded are being implemented to address lessons learned from the Fukushima nuclear accident. When CNC staff's CMD 15H2 was issued, four Fukushima action items were still open. Since then, CNC staff have received Bruce Power's Fukushima update and have determined that three of the four Fukushima action items can be closed as Bruce Power has met the closure criteria. As of today, therefore, only one of 36 Fukushima action items remains open for Bruce A and B, and this action item concerns the evaluating the means to prevent unfiltered releases. I would point out that the original design of the Bruce containment contains a filtered air discharge system this Fukushima action item would be an upgrade to that existing capacity. The Fukushima action item is on track for completion by December 31st, 2015, as per its original schedule, since these changes required long lead design times. <coughs> Bruce Power has submitted a plan and schedule for the design enhancement. Bruce Power proposed an alternate method for achieving filtered venting and the plan and schedule are currently being evaluated for acceptance by CNSC staff. 
Also part of the Fukushima response, Bruce Power has improved its emergency response organization to meet international best practices. Bruce Power has also procured new emergency and mitigating equipment, such as portable emergency power generators and emergency water pumping. These pumpers are capable of providing water to the primary and secondary irradiated fuel bays and boilers. Other modifications made in response to the Fukushima event include modifications to instrument air to lock open the boiler safety relief valves and installation of passive autoletic recombiners in all units. Bruce Power also built a new state-of-the-art emergency management center. The functionality of this new emergency management center and emergency equipment was tested in October 2012 during a full-scale emergency exercise called the Huron Challenge. CNC role is to ensure that an accident never happens. The Bruce facility is licensed because the commission, commission considered it safe to operate. However, in the extremely unlikely situation of an accident, in 2014, CNC staff amended the Bruce A and B license condition handbooks to require the pre-distribution of potassium iodide pills in the 10-kilometer affected zone by December 2015. Bruce Power has acknowledged that they will meet this new requirement by December 2015. In conclusion, Bruce Power has adequately responded. The Fukushima event and its emergency management program continues to meet all regulatory requirements. Given that Units 3 and 8 have been operating for approximately 30 years, CNC staff put emphasis on the aging management program. Over the past licensing period, Bruce Power has addressed this regulatory focus area by establishing an integrated aging management program which includes plant condition assessments that assure fitness for service of all systems, structures and components. These plant condition assessments feed into a, a life cycle management plans and are updated on a regular ba basis to continuously monitor the effects of aging. Fitness for service of all systems, structures and components is assured through the implementation of an integrated management program. The CNC regulatory document on aging management which was issued in 2014, is included in the updated licensing requirements. In conclusion, Bruce Power is adequately managing aging of the plant through its integrated aging management program. As per similar discussions at previous licensing hearings, the Bruce A and B pressure tubes are reaching the 210,000 equivalent full power hours which is a design assumption made when the stations were originally constructed. In September 2014, the Commission issued a temporary authorization for Bruce Power to operate Bruce B units 5 and 6 beyond the 210,000 hours, up to a maximum of 245,000 hours. Units 5 and 6 were expected to reach this milestone before license renewal. Details of the unit's full power hours are identified in the next slide. However, CNC staff have verified that Bruce Powers has established programs to, in place to monitor the fitness for service of pressure tubes up to 245,000 hours and to implement corrective actions if required. These programs include engineering capabilities to assess the structural integrity of the pressure tubes, in-service inspections, and continuous inspection, testing, and maintenance, which are performed at every unit outage. Ongoing research to validate the safety and integrity of pressure tubes indicate that adequate safety margins exist for all units. 245,000 hours is a whole point, but not a cliff edge effect. It is an indicator which notes when further assessments will be required. In the meantime, Bruce Power continues to monitor and inspect all pressure tubes and take appropriate action to maintain them. In conclusion, the pressure tubes and all eight units continue to be fit for service and operation. As previously mentioned, this table shows the current equivalent full power hours as of January 1st, 2015, as well as the dates when their, each unit will reach the 210,000 and 245,000 milestones. As previously mentioned, in September 2014, the Commission granted temporary approval 
to operate units five and six up to 245,000 hours. This temporary approval was based on Bruce Power's submission of inspection data and material surveillance testing results, which indicate that the new model's predictions are conservative. These results demonstrate that operation of all eight units beyond 210,000 hours is acceptable. Therefore, CNC staff recommend the Commission extend their previous approval and make it permanent for the operation of all eight units up to the next hold point of 245,000 equivalent full power hours. So another regulatory focus area is Bruce Power's submission of a completed probabilistic safety assessment, which builds on the updating the probabilistic safety assessments which were submitted in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Bruce Power submitted the completed probabilistic safety assessment to demonstrate compliance with the CNSC regulatory document on probabilistic safety assessment. CNSC staff have verified and accepted Bruce Power's methodology. CNSC staff also conducted a focus type 2 inspection on the dominant contributors of the submitted at power internal events models. The inspection validated that Bruce Power's probabilistic safety assessment followed the CNSC approved methodology and demonstrates that the risk limits are met. This is discussed in more detail in the following slides. However, overall, the CNC staff concluded that Bruce Power is compliant with the current licensing requirements for probabilistic safety assessments. Bruce Power, like most other nuclear power plant operators, utilizes two internationally agreed metrics to assess the the probabilistic risk of potential accident at its stations. These safety goals are called severe core damage frequency and large release frequency. Severe core damage frequency is a measure of the likelihood of releasing radioactive material from the fuel into containment. Large release frequency is a measure of the potential for the release of radioactive material to the environment from containment. These metrics are quantified in the probabilistic safety assessments with the results expressed as a frequency of occurrence per year. For example, the internationally accepted limit expressed as a likelihood of severe core damage frequency in a single unit is 1 times 10 to the minus 4 or once in 10,000 years. These metrics ensure that the public and the environmental risk from the operation of a nuclear station is negligible. This table shows the Bruce a, that Bruce A and B meet the safety goal limits for single units. For example, at Bruce A, the severe core damage is assessed at three times in 100,000 years for, of a reactor operation, which is significantly below the limit. There is currently no ex internationally accepted whole site probabilistic safety assessment methodology for station aggregation. The Canadian nuclear industry is leading the world in the development of such a methodology. A, however, a simple summation of the unit per hazard basis results in a single unit aggregation number that also meets the safety goals limits for both Bruce A and B. Probabilistic safety assessments are one of the various studies used to improve safety. These numbers demonstrate that Bruce A and B stations are robust, have multiple defense provisions in place and that all risks limits are met at both stations. Another regulatory focus area was the assessment of the environment. Environmental assessments have been completed, have been conducted for projects that were triggered under the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act. The most recent environmental assessment under the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act was conducted in 2005 for the Units 1 and 2 refurbishment project. In 2006, the Commission accepted the results of the Environmental Assessment Screening Report for the project. An Environmental Assessment Follow-up Program was undertaken by Bruce Power and is subject to CNC staff oversight until its full implementation in 2017. Bruce Power provides annual Environmental Assessment Follow-up program reports to the CNC staff, and CNC staff are satisfied with Bruce Power's management of this follow-up program. CNC staff also continuously assess the environment under the Nuclear Safety Control Act. 
This environmental assessment demonstrates that Bruce Power continues to make adequate provisions for the protection of the environment. Bruce Power has ongoing environmental monitoring programs, such as thermal impact assessments on whitefish. Bruce Power continues to work towards the implementation of a series of CSA standards on environmental management of nuclear facilities. This includes CSA standards on environment monitoring programs, effluent monitoring programs, and environmental risk assessments. In addition, CNC staff also launched an independent environmental monitoring program around the sites. CNC staff independently monitor results to confirm that the public and the environment around the Bruce A and B stations are safe. CNC staff independent environmental monitoring program results are consistent with the results submitted by Bruce Power, confirming that the licensee's environmental protection program protects the health and safety of people in the environment. These results are published on the CNSC website and demonstrate continuous improvement efforts at the CNSC. In conclusion, CNSC staff are satisfied that Bruce Power is making adequate provisions for the protection of the environment. Bruce A Unit 22 were refurbished and returned to service in late 2012. Currently, Bruce Power has not submitted an application for refurbishment of the remaining units. In preparation for the licensing beyond 2020, Bruce Power will be moving to a periodic safety review process to support long-term operation. Bruce Power plans to submit a full periodic safety review no later than 2019. A periodic safety review is an assessment of the current state of the plant and its performance to determine the extent to which it conforms to applicable modern code standards and practices and to identify any factors that would limit safe long-term operation. The Bruce Power reactors remain safe to operate for the next licensing period. Bruce Power must return to the Commission if a decision is made to refurbish any unit in order to obtain Commission approval to initiate the refurbishment project. A license condition to this effect has been included in the proposed license. Should Bruce Power decide not to refurbish any unit, there is also a proposed license condition on end of commercial operations. These two new license conditions are discussed further in slide 27. Moving to other matters of regulatory interest, early in the review process, First, Mate, First Nations and Métis groups who may have an interest in the Bruce license renewals were identified, provided information about the project, encouraged to participate in the public hearings and offered an opportunity to apply for the funding through the CNSC Participant Funding Program. In December 2013, CNSC staff sent notification letters to the identified Aboriginal groups in the Bruce County area, which include the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, the historic Saugeen Métis, and the Métis Nation of Ontario. CNC staff made themselves available to meet with interested groups to discuss the Bruce license renewal applications and are committed to continuing these discussions. Participant funding was made available to assess members of the public, Aboriginal groups and other stakeholders to participate in the CNC regulatory process for the Bruce A and B license renewal. A total of 49350 was awarded to eight applicants with two uh, renewals with two applications still pending review. In terms of financial guarantees, Bruce Power is in compliance with the cost recovery regulations and the $14.2 billion in financial guarantees were accepted by the Commission in 2012 still remain valid. Finally, Bruce Power has a robust public information program and is compliant with all regulatory requirements in this area. During the last renewal process for the Bruce A and B in 2009, CNC staff introduced a new format for the Bruce Power for the uh, Power Reactor Operating License and the first uh, license condition handbook. Since that time, and the issuance of the current Bruce A and B licenses, the license condition handbook, CNC staff have introduced many improvements based on operating experience gained from the use of the license condition handbooks. 
This has led to the development of standardized license conditions and the standardized license condition handbook templates and the refinement of the safety and control areas framework. The proposed Bruce license and license condition handbook take these continuous improvement activities into account and are discussed in more detail in the following slide. The proposed license operating license follows the simplified format adopted for other recent nuclear power plant operating license renewals. CDC staff are proposing to combine the current Bruce A and B licenses into a single license and a single license condition handbook. Consolidation will streamline administrative changes to the license and or license condition handbook, improve coordination in ensuring compliance, and increase transparency to the public. The proposed licenses, license includes standard license conditions that make reference to licensee programs. Specific CNSC regulatory documents and CSA standards have been moved from the license to the license condition handbook. In addition to the standard license condition for the 14 and safety and control areas, the operating license also includes site-specific license conditions that cover the following activities changes to the lease agreement between Bruce Power and OPG, continued operations and a requirement to return to the Commission for approval to undertake a refurbishment or a major component replacement project, notification to the Commission and provisions of a plan if Bruce Power decides to end commercial <laughs> operations, management and storage of booster fuel assemblies at Bruce A, implementation and maintenance of a nuclear safety criticality program, implementation and maintenance of a program for receipt, storage, handling of the prescribed substance Cobalt-60 at Bruce B. I would note that four of these site-specific license conditions are in the current Bruce Power operating licenses, while, two on, while the two on the continued operation and end of commercial operations are being proposed as new license uh, requirements. The proposed operating license and the associated condition license, license condition handbook reflects the continuous nature of safety improvements of the Canadian nuclear power plants and its regulator. Bruce Power is compliant with all existing regulatory requirements. Since 2009, obviously many new and revised CNC regulatory documents and Canadian Standard Association standards have been updated. Boost Power has performed gap analyses and provided transition plans with implement dates on all these regulatory and new regulatory requirements or CSA standards. CNC staff will update the Commission via the annual CNC staff integrated safety assessment of Canadian nuclear power plants report. In the meantime, Boost Power has adequate measures in place for all safety and control areas. A total of 25 newer revised CNC regulatory documents and industry standards have been added as updated requirements in the license condition handbook. This means that the current requirements are being replaced by newer versions of a CNC regulatory document in the spirit of continuous improvement. There are 15 new or revised CNC regulatory documents that are being proposed as update requirements for the next licensing period of 2015 to 2020. The implementation dates are listed, were accepted by CNC staff. As you can see from the table, many of the updated regulatory re documents will be fully implemented by Bruce Power when the proposed license and license condition handbook are to come into effect on the 1st of June, 2015. In addition to the CNC regulatory documents, there are also 10 updated Canadian Standard Association standards being proposed for inclusion in the License Condition Handbook. The implementation dates of these CSA standards are listed in this slide. CNC staff will continue to update the Commission, again via the CNC Annual Staff Integrated Safety Assessment of Canadian Nuclear Power Plants Report on the progress of these continuous improvement activities. So on November 28, 2014, Bruce Power made several uh, requests to the Commission in a supplemental information submission in support of their license renewal. 
As part of the recommendation for license renewal, CNC staff requests that Commission consider the inclusion of an earlier version of the CNC regulatory document on accident management until residu residual issues with the newer version are resolved. CNC staff recommend that the Commission accept this request made by Bruce Power. CNC staff also recommend that the Commission consider inclusion of the CNC regulatory document on emergency preparedness as a new license requirement. CNC staff consulted with Bruce Power and have reached agreement to include this regulatory document in the License Condition Handbook with a clarification that Bruce Power is compliant with Clause 2.26 of the regulatory document with the current location of Bruce Power's Emergency Management Centre. The third request was to exempt Bruce Power from carrying out qualified third-party reviews as per Clause 4.51 and 5.924 of the CSA Standard on Fire Protection. Bruce Power has recently withdrawn this exemption request and will instead pursue its, this issue regarding these clauses with the CSA Technical Committee to allow a more fulsome discussion with other industry stakeholders who also use this standard. In conclusion, CNC staff recommend that the Commission consider the inclusion of the two regulatory documents on accident management and emergency preparedness and response as new license requirements. CNC staff also recommend that the Commission do not exempt Bruce Power from carrying out third party reviews on fire hazard assessments until the issues have been resolved via the CSA Standards Committee. I will now turn over the presentation to Mr. Howden for concluding remarks. Thank you, Mr. Lafreniere. Based on the assessment of Bruce Power's safety performance, CNSC staff conclude that as per Section 24.4 of the Nuclear Safety and Control Act, Bruce Power is qualified to carry on the activities authorized by the license, and in carrying out the license activities, Bruce Power has made and will continue to make adequate provision for the protection of the environment, the health and safety of persons, and the maintenance of national security and measures required to implement international obligations to which Canada has agreed. I would now like to provide CNSC staff's overall recommendations before closing. In regards to Bruce Power's request for license renewal of the Bruce A and Bruce B nuclear generating stations, CNSC staff recommend that the Commission accept CNSC staff conclusions and recommendations presented in CNSC staff CMD 15-H2 and our presentation today. As Mr. Lafreniere has described, I'd like to reinforce that there are many proposed improvements cited throughout the CMD where CNSC staff has provided recommendations to the Commission for inclusion of new or updated documents in the License Conditions Handbook. The intent of the recommendations is to promote continuous improvement by providing clearly documented requirements to boost power. In many cases, the documents represent a codification of existing regulatory requirements. Thus, Bruce Power already meets those requirements. In some cases, the documents present updated regulatory requirements, and thus an implementation period is required to fully meet the requirements and thereby continue to improve safety. If the Commission renews the operating license for Bruce A and B, CNSC staff requests that the Commission accept the inclusion of these documents in the License Conditions Handbook. CNSC staff also recommend that the Commission renew a single Bruce A and B operating license with an expiry date of May 31, 2020 and consider the License Conditions Handbook in the decision to renew the operating license. In particular, and as discussed in slide 31, CNSC staff recommend that the Commission consider the inclusion of two CNSC reg docs on accident management and nuclear emergency preparedness and response as new licensing requirements. These are specific requests that Bruce Power made in a supplemental submission in November 2014. CNSC staff also recommend that the Commission authorize the delegation of authority as set out in CMD 15-H2. Section 4.9 of the CMD indicates that there are three license conditions which mention a person authorized by the Commission. These license conditions are license condition 3.2 regarding a restart of a reactor after a serious process failure. License condition 15.2 regarding continue operation or refurbishment of a unit. This is a requirement to notify the CNSC and submit appropriate information. It does not authorize refurbishment or continued operation beyond the end of the proposed 2020 licensing <coughs> period. 
The third license condition, 15.3, regarding end of commercial operation of Bruce A and or Bruce B, is a requirement to inform the CNSC and to submit plans for transition to a safe storage state. For these delegations, CNSC staff recommend that the authority for allowing these three conditions to occur is de delegated by the Commission to the Executive Vice President and Chief Regulatory Operations Officer, who can further delegate this authority to the following two staff, the Director General of the Directorate of Power Reactor Regulation and the Director of the Bruce Regulatory Program Division. Notwithstanding this delegation of authority, Commission approval to initiate a refurbishment project would still be required. Finally, CNSC staff recommend that the Commission authorize Bruce Power to operate Units 1 to 8 pressure tubes up to the hold point of 245,000 equivalent full power hours. I note that Bruce Power is asking for 247,000 hours in this presentation. CNSC staff can support this. Originally, Bruce Power did not provide a number, so we chose 244,000, which was the lower end of the range of assessment and was equivalent to the temporary authority that the Commission issued for Bruce Units 5 and 6. In closing, I wish to reiterate that Bruce A and B are operating safely and do not pose a significant risk to the health and safety of Canadians nor to the environment. Bruce Power has also <coughs> implemented adequate safety measures to continue safe operation of the Bruce A and B nuclear generating stations until the end of the proposed licensing period in May 2020. Thank you, Mr. President and Commission members. We are prepared to respond to any questions you may have. In particular, the submission from Greenpeace has posed a number of questions and requested info. We are just reviewing the submission now. However, we are in a position to comment on the section confirmation of license compliance regarding probabilistic risk assessment and the Fukushima Action Plan compliance, if you wish us to do so. Thank you. Okay, thank you.